Okay, last of all, I wanted to show you how my shoes were coming along and give you a few tips about how to work with paper. Okay, first tip. If you wanna give thickness to the sole part of your shoe, then using paper rolled up somehow into a tube or it can be a different shape is one way to give it thickness. Or you can thicken your sole by stacking layers of cardboard. That'll work too. Paper is stronger and sturdier vertically than horizontally. Horizontally, I could smash this easily. Vertically, it's a little bit harder. <clears throat> but one is easier to smash than a lot of them. I can't smash this and I can stand on it. It'll take my whole weight and I weigh a lot. So there's strength in numbers. I'll show you how I made this fast forwarded. Okay, so all I did was I grabbed a piece of paper that had lines on it already. There's lots of different kinds of paper with lines. Um, and I just did that so that I could cut even strips. If you don't find line paper, just use a ruler. Um, then I cut those strips in half just to have more of them because I, I didn't need them to be that long. Put a little glue on the end, roll it up, and then you got yourself a little tube of paper. It takes a little bit of time to do this part, so I would highly suggest that you do this while you do something else. Maybe you're listening to an audiobook or uh, listen to a podcast or watch a documentary or something to pass the time. I traced my feet, cut it out of cardboard, and that was the, the sturdy part of the sole of my shoe. And then I just started gluing these um, paper tubes next to each other. I didn't even glue them to the cardboard. I could have glued them to the cardboard, um, but I just chose not to, I don't know why. And for this part, I just used um, tacky glue, but you could use anything. You could still use glue stick. You could use hot glue gun. You could use Elmer's glue, whatever. And same thing, this takes a long time, so listen to something while you do it. Double task in some way. Okay, so now that I got this, I could, I don't know, spread a bunch of glue on here, stick this down. Maybe even spread a bunch of glue on here and stick this down. And then I would have my, my shoe platform, the sole of my shoe. How exciting! But maybe before I glue this down, I'm going to have some kind of a strap that's going to hold my foot in there like a sandal. I don't know. Hey, I'm making this up as I go, just like you guys will be. There are so many ways to design a sandal. See what I mean? Finding a way to attach that sole to your foot can be kind of a fun game. Another option, if you want, you can take your strip of paper, fold it in half once, fold it in half again, So you basically fold it into fourths. You have four sections. And then you fold one side the other way. And then you can put glue on here. And then you've got a little triangular cube. I made some long ones. I made a whole bunch. I'm rich with triangular tubes. Yeah. I wanted to make a big fat shoe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yes. If you want to get a precise fold somewhere, all you need to do is score where you want that fold to be, and then it'll fold right there for you, right where you want it to fold. So say I wanted a, a crease, a fold right along here for some reason, I don't know what the reason might be. Um, it's a little hard to get it right in that exact spot. See, that fold did not come out very good. And that was a poopy fold. But on the other hand, if I crease it, just like I did with the cardstock, I want it right there. Then all I gotta do is push really hard with a pen. The purpose of the ruler is just to make it a straight line. I could do it without the ruler too, but it's nicer with a straight line. And then I just start curving it and it gives right where that score is. What the scoring does is it squashes the cardboard right there, embosses it, puts a dent in there, weakens the cardboard in that spot, and then when you curve it, it gives you a good fold. A lot better than this. I've never actually tried it with a cardboard box cardboard. 
let's see how well that works. Say I want to, I don't know, imagine that for some reason I want to make a fold right there. Not very pretty. Let's see what happens if I do the little scoring technique. Say I want to fold right there. Let's see if this works. Hopefully it does. Or I'm basically ripping it. And then, ooh. It does. <laughs> okay, another tip. Say I want to get a nice curve. You can do this. Use the edge of a table and just go like that with your cardboard. You'll get a nice curve. The more you want it to curve, the more you need to do it. You even get to go all the way around if you want it to. Okay, and probably the last tip with cardboard or paper, if you want to create some kind of a rounded form, say you wanted, you've got this round now, maybe that's the, end, the tip of your shoe or something, um, you want it to curve over your shoe. Anytime you want to curve, just cut a notch out of it. Say something like that, for example. I cut that out. Actually, I'm gonna cut several notches out of it so you can see that better. Then I can just start bending it over, getting it to curve, and then well, that can start looking like, if I were to glue that together with hot glue or something, that could start looking like the end of a shoe or, or something, just a curved area. I could either glue these together or I could put a piece of tape or glue another piece of cardboard behind that to reinforce it. Is that cool or what? See, that's just with a little bit of tape. Another idea I'm gonna throw out there is the possibilities of using origami to decorate your shoe. What about that? I was actually considering maybe using some of those origami claws that students love to make and mess around with in class. I was gonna maybe put some of those claws on my shoe somehow. I don't know, I could either make it go like or I can make it go like Haven't decided yet. First, I have to learn how to make those claws. Ooh, and I almost forgot. Speaking of paper shoes and origami and stuff, check out these pictures I found where other fashion designers have played around with the idea of using origami for fashion design. Paper in fashion design? Yes, origami in fashion design. Check these examples out. Strike the pose. And that's it. That's all for today. And by the way, you don't have to use any of the techniques I'm showing you. Your shoes don't have to turn out looking like mine. Not at all. They're just suggestions. I've already gotten a lot of pictures of students' shoes and they look totally different. They've all come up with their own ways of problem solving the, this paper shoe assignment. It's pretty cool. I like seeing everybody's shoes. So make sure you send me pictures. I already have a pretty good collection, but I want it to get bigger. I'm gonna to try to put a link in the description of my Pinterest page where I've collected images that inspired me for all the different ways that shoes can be made. So feel free to take a look at that if you're looking for some inspiration. Watch for my next video coming up. Happy paper shoe making. Look what I can do.